I'm going to speak to you tonight on the subject of shout. <laughs> it's a loud subject. And uh, last time I was in the, well, not the last time, the la time before I was in the United States, I was actually in Pastor Arnie's church, but just before I went there, I was in Detroit, Michigan. That is the place of Motown. So I land in Detroit. I get picked up by a guy I've never met. He's a pastor of a church there. And as we're driving out of the airport, he says, Russell, would you like to go to an African-American conference? I said, oh, yeah, that, that'd be cool. He said, CC Winans is singing. I said, I'm there. So he said, we're a bit underdressed because they all get dressed up. I said, that's cool. He said, there might not be that many white folk there. I said, that's cool. So we go in there and there's actually five white folk and I'm one of them. I was on the fourth row. You know that old song, Shine, Jesus, Shine? <laughs> Bold and shining glory, you know. And the place is rocking. They're, ow, ow, they're just going crazy. And, and the, the organist, it's just rocking. And I thought, oh, cool. It's an African-American Planet Shakers meeting. You know? <laughs> and C.C. Winex comes and sings, and it is incredible. The presence of God is incredible. And I'm there, like, I've died and gone to heaven. The preacher gets introduced, his name's Bishop George E. Patterson. And he's a big African-American preacher. I've got a little lady who's next to me who's about 70 to 75. And she's got the gloves on. <laughs> she's all pretty and there I am, bald white guy next to this 75-year-old lady. And the bishop begins to preach and... And he gets louder and louder. And before long, everybody is shouting and jumping. And, and they're going crazy. And this lady, 75, next to me, she's dancing like, Whoa. And she grabs me by the hand. She says, come on, dance, white boy. And so I got up. The place was rocking. Why? Because Jesus has given us something to shout about. And we're going to look at shout tonight. The word shout means to sound an alarm. You know, it's time for churches to get excited, youth groups to get excited, young people to get excited and begin to shout, not just with their voices, but with their lives, to prophesy, to, to be pioneers, to be people who reach the poor, to be people who shout with our lives. You know, it's time for us to sound an alarm to Looney Lucy. Devil, your time is up in my school. Devil, your time is up in my university. Devil, you're, I'm sounding an alarm. My life is shouting, man. You can't put it down. It's loud. But not only does the word shout mean to sound an alarm, it also talks about proclaiming the year of Jubilee or proclaiming God's party on the planet. You see, when people walk into our churches and our youth groups, they want to see our lives shouting. Come join the party, man. It's cool. The Holy Ghost is here. He touches you. Healing happens. People are set free. You don't have to rely on the silly weed anymore to be happy. <laughs> I've got something to make you more happy than he. A future and a hope. <laughs> But we're going to look at shout, what happens when we shout. In, one, in Joshua 6, 16 and 20. <laughs> God said to them to march. <laughs> that was the funniest thing, Mal, after being circumcised. Walking around. 
And on the seventh time around when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. You see, when you and I shout with our lives, we see the walls that the devils try to put up in our cities, the walls of abuse, the walls of pain, the walls of sin, the walls of discouragement, the walls of hopelessness, the walls of going nowhere, the walls of poor, the walls of fear nothing about yourself those walls that the devils put up as we shout with our lives about how good God is the walls come down and I'm sick of the walls the devil tries to put up I'm sick of it he makes me sick putting up walls in families well, we're gonna shout he said, he said, keep quiet, keep quiet. I like the church quiet and shy and reserved. Well, I want to tell you something, devil. We're not shy, we're not quiet and reserved because we have a God who is alive. <laughs> Shout to bring the walls down. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 4, 5 that when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant talked about the presence of God. When the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came into the camp, all Israel raised such a great shout that the ground shook. You see, shout is a signal to the enemy. The presence of God is in the camp. You see, that's why we need churches to be alive and excited about God because it's a signal. Warning, warning, presence of God. Devils go, ah! People go, whoo, fantastic. You know, we get excited about a lot of things. Australians love sport. <laughs> you know, Queenslanders and New South Welshmen hate each other where it comes to the, the, the um, yeah, that. I, I've seen people change, I, I've seen people change personality over football games. But I remember, the Sydney Olympics, yeah. Australia were awesome in the swimming. But you know, I landed, I was coming back from Sydney via, via Auckland via Sydney. I landed in Adelaide, in Adelaide airport, got off on the tarmac and it was time, uh, it was time for Kathy Freeman's 400 meters. <laughs> Kathy Freeman. Now, I don't know Kathy Freeman and she doesn't know me. But that night she became my Kathy. All of Australia embraced Kathy Freeman. Oh, our Kathy. Bruce McAvaney was commentating that night. We landed on the, uh, the, in the Adelaide airport and we went in and, and there was a TV screen up and there was about 200 people around this television screen. Usually in airports, you wait for your bags, you get it, and you get out there really quick. But not tonight. Kathy was running the 400 meters. Uh, so we're there. We don't know Kathy. She doesn't know us. We're in Adelaide. She's in Sydney. She can't hear us. Bruce McAvaney says it's going to be a special night tonight. Kathy's going to run a special race. All those who don't know Bruce McAvaney, he, he says special a lot. Everyone say special. <laughs> so there we are around this television. <laughs> and the gun goes. And all of a sudden, 200 people who don't know each other are beginning to shout and scream in Adelaide Airport, she's in Sydney, she doesn't know us, we don't know her, but she's our Kathy. And we go, go Kathy! Meanwhile, our bags have come out on the conveyor belt and they're going around. She's running, we're running with her. Go Kathy! 
She runs 100 metres, 200 metres. The crowd in the Adelaide airport are going wild. Kathy, 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 Kathy. We're about to have heart attacks. We're so excited. Meanwhile, our bags are going around. 300 metres and Kathy gets to the front and she begins to run and we're just going crazy. <laughs> Kathy! She's right, Kathy! Okay, Kathy! She's getting there. There's 20 metres. Kathy! 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 She gets there and she wins. <laughs> And all the 200 people in the airport are jumping up and down. They're hugging each other. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy! Ah! Meanwhile, our bags are still going around. Let me just say this. I don't know Kathy. She don't know me. I was in Adelaide. She was in Sydney. But there's a God in heaven who not only do I know, but he knows me. Not only can he hear us. So when we shout about our God, we shout about something that lasts for eternity, much more than a game of sport.